Okay, this is the demo that I said I would make for you on how to improv piece a block. So the supplies that you'll need are uh, a little selection of scraps, um, a paper foundation. This is just a five inch square of newspaper. I'm keeping this one small so this demo doesn't take too long. And actually the paper itself is optional. I prefer it because it gives me sort of some boundaries so that I can see where it is that I'm going and what space I need to fill. But if you can sort of visualize that uh, without this foundation, um, totally skip the paper. Uh, a pair of scissors, and then you'll need a pressing surface and an iron. So to get started, I like to first of all start with a piece that has five sides, sometimes more. Uh, sometimes I start with a triangle, but mostly I start with a five-sided piece. I don't start with a square because I don't want something that's going to look too log cabinish. Okay, so here is a nice weird little scrap. So I'm going to just cut this up uh, so that it has five sides. All right. So there we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five. The next thing that I do is that I almost never put this first piece in the dead center. Again, I don't want something that looks log cabinish, so I'm going to set this off to the side. Uh, all right, I think I like that. Uh, and so for the next piece, okay, one more thing. Don't add your first piece on the shortest side. This will cause you to lose one of your sides pretty quickly actually in a couple of rounds that'll be gone so start anywhere but on that shortest side and you can st I like to start with something that is already similar in size to what I have so that I don't have a ton of waste yeah this looks good this is a pretty big piece but I'm going to use it anyway okay so I've just lined up two sides two sides of these two pieces Put it in the machine, quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna open and press. I think I'm gonna finger press today just to keep everything here in your view. And that piece was a little big for me, so I'm going to um, trim it down. Okay, now when I add my next pieces, the other thing that I try not to do is to piece this log cabin style because again, I'm trying not to have a log cabin block. But if you liked the um, Rome quilt that looked uh, log cabin-y, the one on gray, then you would want a log cabin piece this, in which case you would put this piece in the center. The other thing about going log cabin style is obviously there's a lot less to piece here than there is here. So you're going to get off. You're going to get off quickly. Okay, so I want something similar in size to this. So that's about the right length. It's a little bit longer. I'm going to line up those two sides and sew that on. All right, open and press. Okay, I'm going to make this side next because there's an issue there. So you can see that these are not even and I'm going to leave them just like that. Find a piece that's this long or cut something down to be this long. Okay, perfect. So see, this is a ratty little piece. I'm not going to bother to trim it up. I'm going to use it just like it is. I'm going to line up this long edge with this edge here. And then I'm just going to let it continue over uh, this overhang of fabric. Sew that in place. And then I'm going to come in, lift this up if it's uh, sewn down, and I'm going to trim that extra off. And this keeps this thing from getting too bulky. Okay, so open and press here. Now, if I was going log cabin style, I would go there, and actually I am going to go there so that I can show you what to do about this angle situation. Um, so I just need a scrap that's about the right size. Yes. Okay, so because these are angles, I want to let this hang over 
Can you see that's longer than this? And I want it to hang over on this end too. If you backed this up all the way to the edge of this and lined it up that way, you're gonna come up short. So let that hang over. Line up these sides and sew that seam. I'm gonna come in here and trim this piece out. All right, open and press. Now I'm gonna swing all the way back around and start filling in some of this space back here. Oh, that's a little big. Oh, here. So now here's a triangle. Now this is a great way to use up those leftover triangles you have from all of the things that you've trimmed up. Um, so I don't uh, feel obligated to only use strips and squares. So that lined up just like that. All right, open and press. And now our five-sided piece has morphed. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides by adding that triangle. And we're just gonna keep going. Here, you can see that this is too long. This is too long here. So I'm just gonna line this up with this back edge and the rest of that is gonna get trimmed away. This hangs over longer to accommodate the angle. All right, open and press there. I mean, trim, trim that off and then open and press. Okay, so I think you have the basic idea. So I'm gonna keep working on this block, maybe speed this video up a little bit so it doesn't take so long. And I will check back with you in a couple of minutes. Okay, let's stop here and talk about this situation where I would have something quite long here, which just would give me one big, long, boring strip. So instead of doing that, I'm going to sew two pieces together. These are similar in, in width, but not exactly the same, and that's fine. And now when I go to cover this side, I'm going to have... Uh, a lot more interest here because it's not just one big long boring block. The other thing is when you sew these in, um, I like to open the seam so there's not a lot of extra bulk here. These blocks can be pretty bulky just because you've got so many different pieces. Okay, let's go back to the um, time lapse and speed this up. Okay, so now um, let's come back in and I have all of these things covered except for this one little sliver right here. 
Now what will happen if I just add a little piece right here is I'm going to have a bunch of um, bulk in the seam allowances right in this corner where I want to attach more pieces. So a good way to handle that is to choose a larger piece and back it up a little bit. And so you're going to lose some of this, which is fine, and you're going to keep those seam allowances from all piling up in the corner. So instead of having lined that up there, I backed it off. Let's trim that up. And now we have um, a lot less going on in that corner. So now what we have left to do is to trim this block up. Okay, so here's our final block. Turned out super cute. We've got this offset center. It doesn't look super log cabin-ish. We didn't use super tiny pieces, but we used, you know, good side scraps. We don't have a lot of bulk in the corners. This would probably be the closest problem that we have here. But even so, quarter inch seam allowance. And there's a little tiny problem right there where this didn't come all the way out. You want to avoid something like that. But in this case, this is going to be taken up in the seam allowance. So I'm just going to call it good. So that is how you take a pile of scraps and make a darling little improv block.